Hello and welcome back to the Cancelled Podcast. Today we have a guest that I never thought we would have. <laughs> and I like, definitely do not think the Cancelled Podcast aud- audience is expecting Miss Jojo And Siwa. it's such a surprise because it's like, I well first of all, today we have Jojo Siwa. Oh, hi. <laughs> here. Icon, living legend. I can't even describe you. you in a few words and that's what I want to get into Thank today. You. It's um, It's actually, that's one of my favorite things is like seeing what tv shows or articles or whatever will like describe me as i did yeah. this award show and it was like jojo siwa american dancer and author <laughs> i was like valid nailed it sometimes honestly. it's like jojo siwa social media sensation and pop star i'm like yeah. valid i swear to god like she was just asking um who our favorite guests are like you're up there Thank because you. it's like I DM'd you like two nights ago and I was like, will you come on canceled? Yeah. And but you were like, yes. And then you were like, how does like Sunday work? And I was like, there's no way like in two days. Just immediate. Like down. And it's just. Yeah. I think this is the perfect time for you to come yeah. on canceled. The thing is, is like, you know this, like I've loved you for forever. forever. And you've asked me to do a few things yeah. that like I've wanted to do. Yeah. One of them specifically, I remember was a weed commercial. I don't know if I'm allowed <laughs> to talk about you that You tried to get JoJo in a weed commercial. I tried to get JoJo to be in the cannabis commercial smoking with me, but that's when I was just rogue. No, that was really ambitious and I really admired yeah. that. And at first <laughs> second, I was like, oh my God, this would be hilarious. Like, but then, like, obviously, we both were like, no, you know what? It's not it's right. Too far. Like, and then you were like, what if you, you were respectful about it, too? And you were like, well, you could say something in it that's like, hey, this is bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we tried to find it. And, like, but it was just, it just never aligned. But now, you know, I'm crossing into, like, adult world. And, yeah. And now I'm, I'm, I'm okay to be an adult. Not that I wasn't before, but it's more just like I've been on my own timeline. And it's like now I can. I think child can stardom come on is also. And hope for the best. <laughs> I told her she can cut anything out. I was like, I, I can't imagine being her and like pulling up in a rainbow fucking Lamborghini outside, like terrified. Like it's, a, you can cut anything you want. Nah, truthfully, I pulled up and I was like, finally, I can I'm, go. I'm so motherfucking excited to have you, you on today. And I have, I've known you literally forever. And that's why I'd always ask you yeah. things like that because I've always known like how you are as yeah. a person, you know what I mean? But you kind of had to slowly ease into yeah. showing the world so much of that, you yeah. know? Yeah. I mean, listen, I always, from a young age, have been very mature, very unsheltered, like very yeah. open to the world. And nothing that I ever did was fake or was forced or was somebody telling me what to do. I mean, like literally with YouTube, for example, like I came up with, created, filmed, edited, and uploaded it all myself. You know yeah. what I mean? And so it's like nothing that I did was ever fake or phony or character, but I... I was young and yeah. I <clears throat> was 14 and I was working like a 37 year old, yeah, which is but funny. I was filming like a 12 year old, you yeah. know what I mean? And so I, I was kind of all over the place age wise, but now that I'm older, it's like, Hey, here's a side of me that like, is there that no one's seen yet? Enjoy. Did you feel pressured? I feel like child stardom is such an interesting thing because it's like the world wants to view you at this age, like on yeah. dance moms with a bow in your hair for way longer than that is who you are. Like Miley really struggled with that. Demi, yeah. all the, like so many child stars have struggled with that. Did you feel pressure to be a Jojo that you yeah. were no longer for a long time? It's so strange because there was moments where I used to tell my mom, this is why child stars go crazy. And I, anytime I would say that, we would fix whatever the problem was. That was She's going awesome on. for that. Yeah, my mom's the best. I love your family. She's my whole family. Yeah, they're, <laughs> they're all great. lit. They're so funny. <laughs> they're so funny. But my mom was always good about being like, okay, what's going on? What don't we like? And normally for me, it was there's something trying to be forced onto me. Because I yeah. started off on reality TV when I was nine. That's where I got my start. And then I jumped to social media when I was, and like that became my main thing when I was 11, 12. And so I've never been like famous for being a character, you yeah. know? So like there was never a box that I was in. It was always like, let's just navigate growing up. You know what I yeah. mean? You were saying that your mom was very good with that, which I'm so grateful yeah. for. I have such a like, I know so many people who are child stars and like fu just fucked up shit happened to yeah. them. It, like really like, I get chills every time thinking about it, like fucks with my head. On Dance Moms, did you see a lot of the other girls have moms that, like, did not move with the same values as yours? I've seen a lot. I mean, I'm trying to think quickly on Dance Moms, like... Or just in the child just star Just in world. general, yes. Yeah. Like, I've seen a lot of moms where I'm just like, oh, you're being what you think a stage mom should be. Yeah, which you is know? dark. And I always say there's, there's a difference between good crazy and bad crazy. Yeah. And listen, <laughs> to be... 
to be a child star, you do have to have parents that are driven. Yeah. You know what I mean? And our stage parents. Like yeah. it's but there is a good crazy and there's a bad crazy. Tish Cyrus, Beyonce's mom, yeah. for example. Like I'm sure Miley's mom Tish and I, I can't think of Beyonce's mom's name, but they're they're a good crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, like, they're still driving their kids across the country to get to get them to an audition. They're a damn but they're good not stage like, mom. Yeah. Yeah, but they're not like wear this, do this, be this. But right. there are miserable. some bad stage moms. I don't yeah. wanna I don't wanna shit on anybody, but we've all seen people who have come out and have resented their parents and it's yeah. tough. Like you just you 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 see why and I've had a lot of moments where I'm like wow if I didn't have a good family this is why people go crazy in yeah. this position because it's so hard like the world sees and knows everything yeah. but nothing at the same time yeah. you know what I mean oh yeah your parents were so good with you like coming out I went to your pride party and this is right yes. after you came out first of all I have so many stories from that party we were just <laughs> talking about downstairs you throw the best parties and you always tell me you're like 48 hours ago I decided to throw a party and then they'll be like literally they'll literally. be like a circus inside and it's like how did you get a circus we always call it hours. shaking the fruit tree yes absolutely. and we always say too like sometimes it's better to just plan it last minute but yeah but the pride party specifically, it literally, I think it was June 1st. And I yeah. told my mom, I was like, what are we doing? We're not, we, like, we need to have a pride party. It's my first pride. Yeah. She's like, let's Huge. fucking do it. And all of a sudden, June 3rd, we had a pride party. How long did they know for before, like, how long did your parents know for? My parents. So, uh, okay. So go 2020, right? Yeah. Very late 2019, I met a best friend and I specifically like asked this best friend I was like I was 16 she was 15 and I was like so how long have you known you were gay and she was like oh I'm not I'm straight like I have a boyfriend and I was like oh no you're gay like come talk to me in six months like you're like she was like the only girl that I like ever knew she was gay and so then she was like what about you are you gay and I was like no 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 and I was like but like if I was ever to fall in love with a girl like that'd be fine you know what I mean yeah and then six months later she came out to me um, as bisexual and I literally straight up said to her I was like no you're not but we're getting warmer I was like Try again in six more months. Um, and then six more months later I went on a family vacation yeah and she was gonna was come. it on a cruise ship it was not on a cruise ship. It was in Disney World. Jojo has this thing where she, like something insane, like relationship wise, always happens to her on a cruise ship. Always on a so cruise funny. ship. <laughs> always on a cruise ship and Disney World. Um, <laughs> anyway, so we were going on a family vacation to Disney World. My mom was like, "Yo, you can bring a friend if you want." And I was like, "Okay, I want to see if this girl could come." Um, same girl. Same girl. Yeah. Mm. And so I knew then she had like officially like come out to me and be like, "Hey, I think I really only do like girls," or I don't really know. And I was like, "Dude, you don't need to know. Like, it's totally fine." Then my parents asked me, they were like, what would you do if she tried to kiss you? Because we were best friends, but long distance yeah. best friends. And I was like, she would never do that. Like, got defensive of it. But in my head, I was like, eh, I'd kind of like it. So and do you think I'm your like, parents knew before you? Yeah. Like, my mom said she knew before knew. your friend. Yeah. And then when we met, like, met up again, it was our first time seeing each other in a year. I literally, like, got in her car because she drove up. And I got in her car in the parking lot and was like, Oh she like and I just like felt a I just like felt a feeling I'd never felt 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 before fallen before I don't know if she's all of it. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, uh oh. And then she asked me straight up. She was like, do you have a crush on anybody? And I was like, yeah. You're like yeah, you. And she was like, who? And I wouldn't tell her because it was her, and I was embarrassed. And she was my best friend, and she would shit on me, and I would shit on her. And so like I'm, in my head, there's no way she would ever like me. Yeah. So I played the whole I can't tell you game. Um, and then she, she was like, well, is it a boy or a girl? She was the first person ever that I said, I have a crush on a girl too. Aww. And so I admitted it to her that I had a crush on a girl. So nine days later, I end up telling her that it's her. She says she has a crush on me, whatever. We have a cute little night. It's fun. The next day I have to say goodbye to her. Don't know when I'm going to see her again. We just confessed our love for each other. Like, what is this now? And so I, we're sobbing, I say goodbye to her, and then I literally get back, I get in the car with my family, because I walked her to her car, I'm sobbing, back in the car with my family to go to the airport, and my mom goes, you really like her, don't you? And I was like, I do. And my mom was like, do you like her as a friend or as more than a friend? And I was like, more than a friend. Oh, and my dad was like, so sick, sweet. no pregnancy scares. <laughs> <laughs> and that is how I came out to my parents. They're so fucking, they were on sick. top of it. They that is amazing. It super, super easy for me. God, I have so many questions for you. Like that entire story just like evoked 75 yeah. questions. But I guess 
Your parents are so supportive. I feel like your friends, your friend group, they're all so supportive. Like, Literally you're very called lucky. them and Which, saying I kissed a girl. That's yeah. how I told everybody. Ab- and that's how you kind of came out, that's right? That's the only reason you yeah, to do it. Yeah, like so, it was a TikTok, right? Yeah, so what happened was um, the Pride House, who uh, Molly, is, Molly Gray is like the the leader of, who I've known. The dancer. Yeah. Yeah. So I've known Molly. Think- she was oh. on So You Think. Oh my gosh, come on, knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> Get it. So I've known Molly since I was eight. Like, yeah. I've known her since before my first TV show. She's come into my studio, like, been close for forever. Um, she has a TikTok group, and they came over, and we made a TikTok to the Ain't It Fun, Ain't It Fun, Ain't It yeah. Now You're One of Us. This was like a week after I had fallen in love with a girl. Like, they didn't know. I didn't tell anyone. I was still like, didn't know how to come out to people. So I only came out to like super close people. So we did that TikTok and then the world kind of speculated. And the Pride House people, Molly was like, oh my God, we're we're so sorry. Like, we don't want to push this on you. And I was like, no, no, no. I was like, it's true. So it's fine. I was like, but now I just got to figure out like how to navigate it, what I want to do. And because I wanted to come out to the world. I wasn't ashamed of it. I just didn't know how. So then I made a TikTok to, I told my mom, I was like, I could either tease it confirm it deny it and i'm not yeah. denying it because it's true it. yeah i can tease with it and like see how it goes or i can just straight up confirm it so i decided to kind of test the water so i posted a video of me just like jamming out to born this way and that's then, what wait, I, remember I remember this that. so vividly so like, this was like a like a really important moment in, like, yeah so I. I was in my kitchen <laughs> i like know where i was i was literally in my kitchen really i, I was eating grapes <laughs> continue <laughs> she's like engraved in your memory yeah. um so then yeah I, I posted that and then the world kind of speculated more and then like two days later that same day i had posted on my close friends instagram story to like tell like my like next extended group of friends i posted that picture of me wearing the t-shirt best gay cousin ever that i remember that and too. Then i posted that on my close so friends <laughs> like why do i remember the shirt i love wearing? it i love it <laughs> and then like three days later <clears throat> It was the middle of the night. I was on FaceTime with my girlfriend. And I wasn't getting good sleep at this time because I would just stay awake reading the internet, reading theories about myself. It's the worst. And I told her, I was like, you know what? I want to post this. And I'm like, I want to tell the world. I want to just post this picture. And she was like, do it. And it was like two in the morning. And I was like, okay, sent. And that was it. That's amazing. That's exactly how it should be. And it's so awesome to see that you had so much control over that. Like you're, you were in your yeah. bed and you're like, I'm going to post a selfie. It's not like a whole team. Yeah. I like it how it wasn't, it just wasn't that big of a deal. It's like, yeah. okay. Well, that's what's yeah. wild. That's the problem with coming out. Like, I feel like people feel so pressured. Like it's a huge thing yeah. and it should yeah. just be like, yeah. I never yeah. like, and this is a thing too that we'll probably get into more. I'm sure just as we talk about my life, but I never felt young growing up. Yeah. Like I remember being 14 and being like, yeah, I'm 14. Like I'm, yeah. ba- this is like 14 year olds should work. This is like how it is. Like I, crazy. and like same with 16, same nope. with 17. And so to me, when I was 17 coming out, I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm almost an adult. Like this is normal. Now I look back though, being 20, only three years older. Yeah. And I can't imagine how I'm going to feel in three more years, but I look yeah. back at myself and I'm like, whoa, like to be a 17 year old. Yeah. And to just go for it and to have no fear. I was like, I didn't understand at the time why people are like, whoa, yeah. like that was brave. Yeah. And like, I don't know, coming out, coming out is a brave thing. Yeah. But it shouldn't have to be. Yeah. It, it should just be a thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it you, is. you probably felt like just supported, though. I feel like a lot of people just don't feel like naturally supported. Especially it's, close to you. you it's know? so weird because I did. And I was like, this is fucking incredible. Like the world had shown so much love, so much support. And then. I read comments and it was the opposite. Don't do that. It was so, (laughs) I remember, I remember vividly, I had like 52,000 comments in 24 hours. Like I had never, and it was like the first two scrolls were like my friends was like press was like other celebrities. And And after that, it was, I kid you not, if it was 52,000 comments, it was 51,800 negative comments. And I was just like, I'm never going to let my kid watch you again. I'm never going to buy a bow again. Like, burning okay, all my child's bows. Think about that, like all the conservative yeah, parents. And That's that, sad as fuck. That was a moment for me where I was like, oh. And then I realized like, look, if somebody's not going to like me because <coughs> on the seventh I was straight to their knowledge and on the eighth I was gay to their knowledge, like... Look, I've been gay for the last 17 years yeah, at like this you point. Didn't make like this like major change overnight. Like And it's not a bad thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I I'm not I think it's sick that you like doubled. Sorry to cut you off. I no, you're fine. You're fine. You just doubled down on it. A lot of people would have been scared in the face of adversity like that and kind of changing everything they know and like a lot of people also just, you know, they'd want the money over there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you really stayed true to who you are and everything. Yeah, and that's I was like if somebody's going to go away because I'm happy then I don't want them to like me anyways. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. But it's hard because then I'm thinking about all these little kids now that their mom is telling them they can't like me because... Son. You but know that's what not I mean? your pressure. That's not your no. journey. That's... You know what I mean? You can't hold the whole world in your hands. Yeah. You were like about... Not six, nine, I guess, is when you started. But yeah. you were about to have a fucking... Not even nine to five. Were, how much... Like, how much were you Wait, working were you, every were you day? nine when you started? So I did my first TV show when I was nine. Dance Moms was very regulated. So while I was on Dance Moms, there's child labor laws that are put in action. You can, we would work, we'd do school from eight to 11. We'd eat from eight, nine, 10, 11. Yeah, we'd eat from 11 to 12. We'd film from 12 to four. We'd have classes for just regular dance from four till 10. We'd repeat it the next day. Yeah, but filming, is crazy. yeah, that's just the dance world though. But like that's, that's, yeah, you yeah. Do that that's not dancer, on camera. Whether you're you just do that on as a dance dancer. Moms or not, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but then once I jumped to social media, I mean, it was all me. So I would take two hours to film a video, two hours to edit a video, two hours to psychoanalyze if my thumbnail was doing <laughs> good or not. And I yeah. would some nights stay up and keep refreshing videos to see if in the 60 minute it's going to boost up. And if it's not, I'm going to make a new thumbnail. And I'm going to. So there was days, I mean, where I would work myself yeah fucking 16 hours do you but think then, that affected you like mentally at all like obviously it was your choice like you were yeah. of saying my parents weren't and i remember even at like 15 like i was so passionate about it that i would do shit like that yeah but like do you think that it affected you over time to care about numbers and care about weird shit like too much there was one night i'll never forget it. we were in new york we were at the marriott painting the picture <laughs> <laughs> and i was maybe 14 i would say 14 maybe 13 and I was obsessing over a thumbnail with numbers and my mom had never taken anything away from me. She never took my phone. She'd always joke about it. Like, oh, I'll take your phone. And I was like, do it. Then I don't get to work for three days. Like yeah. I would always like make shit of it. And I was obsessing over a thumbnail and the video wasn't hitting and I was proud of the video. And I, I yeah. you know, when you like had a video and you're like, it's going to hit. It's a hard feeling. And then it just doesn't. It's a hard so feeling. New thumbnail, new thumbnail. I probably had made like honestly eight new thumbnails, just like refreshing to watch the 60 seconds to see yeah. if it would get a thousand more like yeah crazy and my mom literally walked up to me slammed my laptop and took it and she yeah. was like you're done she was like it's midnight yeah you I had to be awake in the morning and she was like you have to be awake in the morning we're not gonna obsess over numbers like this yeah. and I was like no but you don't understand like I need to and she was like no I do understand and I'm your mom and I've never done this but I'm gonna do it now you're done yeah. And I was Good like, mm -hmm. that's a really, that's like really positive. That's yeah. really, that's like so really, not really true good for parenting. so many people. Yeah. You just said Marriott and I it evoked 83 questions because you're Jojo Siwa. <laughs> um, did you, when did you know you were rich? rich when did fun. you become rich? <laughs> no, I rich. can't even, I say it undeniably. Rich, rich as fuck. How, when did you know you were rich as fuck? Like, how, and, yeah, <laughs> I literally, like her, I, I just say that to her. She's so fucking humble. Don't even get me started on how humble Jojo is. So I'm not saying it like she acts like it, but it's like the house, the car, like you're fucking loaded, bitch, as you should be. <laughs> when did you know? Did your parents let you know? When did you, you know, just everything I want to know. I'm trying to think if there's like a specific moment where I was like, Oh, truthfully, I, I won't lie. Literally, like, maybe two weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> Baby, you have a I Lamborghini. I found out how much, like, we had saved. She's in and, her like, Lamborghini. <laughs> she, like, sees a Prius. She's like, damn. She's like, it's, it's, it's good out here. No, um, like, two weeks ago, I, like, finally processed. Because, okay, so I had a Coogan account. Okay. And oh, my God. So, so many questions. Account, yeah, Coogan account takes 15% of every penny you make while you're a child. And yeah. it has to go in there. Labor laws of California. Yeah. And so my biggest financial income was consistently my YouTube. And so, like, I would see that come in every month. But then my, like, big, 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 like, chunkers were... Uh, <laughs> I, made up a, I made up a word today. Platonism. I love platonism. I love platonism. That's my new word. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Yeah, platonism. Um, I make up words on this podcast every week. Yeah, and then there's, like, every, 80 like tweets about how stupid I am. Cancel a dictionary. <laughs> um, and, and, and so my merchandising... Mm. When when those checks are coming, like whatever, like you knew the bows were bringing in the yeah, dough. Yeah, and then Wait, once so I got, the, my does the I'm sorry to cut you yeah. off, but does the Coogan apply to like those situations or mm. okay. everything? Oh, okay. So Even every your, your YouTube, and then everything. lots mm -hmm. of like okay. fucked up parents take their kids Coogan accounts. Like I know, yeah, like some Jeanette like, no, they can't. Lawyers, so that's whatever. why they invented Coogan accounts because it, well, oh. it's the opposite. They would take their money. And then they were okay. left with nothing. But wait, yeah. wasn't it? J Jeanette McCurdy said that her mom never like properly filled out the paperwork. That so also it never happened. Went. That's yeah. Yeah. It never. She never set it up properly. That's, so yes. she didn't. Her mom got all the money. I mean, that's why that's there to try to protect you. Yeah. But some parents They're still shady. are just shady. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, so when I turned 18, I could, I had to go and get the Coogan account, like, yeah. and transfer all the money. But I, we didn't for a minute. We waited till I was probably 19, 19 and a half. Like, it, we just did all the paperwork. Because that's a process. Mm. And once I was able to process, like, oh, this is 15% add 85% of what this is and that's that number from 9 to 18 blew my mind like that was oh like damn gosh. hard work but so worth it giving yeah. up childhood so worth it you that's know crazy. what I mean like it's tough don't get me wrong like I've I've but I've I like it's yeah I don't know I I always say like now like I'm able to do things for others. I'm able to treat others. I'm able to take people on vacation. And you're set for life. Because I worked so hard. So you get to do what yeah, you like want to do now. Yeah, like you're downstairs, like that's your dream. Like you love to be able to do those kinds of things Yeah, people. I do. When you were like 13 and the bows are on sale, like did you know at that point how much it was making or were you kind of like, also like your lifestyle. Yeah. Like did you grow up? I have so many questions. Like, no, yeah. Um, my family grew up healthy. We didn't grow up. I mean, I, we weren't rich. We were middle class like yeah my dad was a chiropractor so mm -hmm. he had a great job my mom owned a dance studio so she had a great job my brother went to private school I was homeschooled like we yeah. we had a very nice comfortable life but then like there was a point in time where well I was on dance moms you know we we got there and we my mom dropped everything left the studio my dad and brother stayed in Nebraska and we got my first check for being on dance moms and we were like no like we can't live off of this for yeah. what we're doing and like it wasn't us being shady it was a very very or or greedy I guess is a better word it wasn't yeah. us being greedy it was a very small check and it was like we were like we literally can't do this yeah and people don't know that enough that is. like especially pilot beginning season yeah like, you're making no money you know you're making nothing yeah. and you got to put your time in and then we did we made it work we put our time in and it ended up being good but then you know, there was times where we were living in an apartment and it was me and my mom, one bedroom. We turned the living room into my bedroom. My clothes was stored in the kitchen cabinets. Yeah. Like, not to say that, like, we struggled. I mean, we were always blessed. Yeah. We always had food on our table. But, like, I think people think that, like, I just got everything handed to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But, like, nah, there was never, there was never a point in time where it was, like, yeah, honey, do whatever you want. Like, mommy, yeah. and, mommy and daddy got you. Abby used to say that, like, Daddy works on the weekend, so you can do whatever you want. And I'd be like, nah. Like, my dad works hard for a house payment. Like, Were you always, like, because that's such a, she's, she's sassy. Abby Lee Miller, that's yeah. a nice way of putting it. You sassy know what I mean? funny. But yeah. um, she fucking talks, like, and you were one of the only ones who would kind of talk back to her and, like, be like, you know, yeah. what, like, stand up for yourself. Did that ever affect you, though, like, the yelling and the shit that she said? You know, it's interesting because yes and no. Like once I, so I went into Dance Moms being a fan of Dance Moms. Yeah. And like number one fan, still am. Like I literally watch Dance Moms every day. I watch it a lot too. It's a I great show. I fucking love it. Like mm. I'm obsessed with that show. And so I knew what mm. I was getting myself into. And it, I, I'll never forget it was like week, maybe like two or three. and Or no, because it was when I started to be on the pyramid. So it was further in. And my mom was like, God, I just hate that you're always on the fucking bottom of the pyramid. And I'll be like, dude, I literally told my mom, I was like, the people at the bottom get the TV time. The people at the top, congratulations, you're on top. That's it. Yeah. If you're on the bottom, then your mom fights with Abby and then you get more TV time. You've you know always I mean? been an adult. Yeah. And I, <laughs> She's a genius. Yeah. Thank you. That's but that's, I mean, like, I never, I don't know. I, yeah. It was good if you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and like, you're cool with Abby now, yeah? Yeah, I always try to remember where I came from. Like, and yeah. I always would tell myself, like, Abby's just doing her job too. Yeah, you know what I mean. Damn, and, and like, that's the dance. Like, that's just how the dance, dance community is. Yes, dance teachers are not typically nice. Like, yeah. there are they some nice be. dance teachers, but like, Jenna is my fucking best friend in the world. Like, I. She is the his sweetest angel in the world. God, I wish we talked about each other like that, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I do. We do. We do more like this slut I have a podcast with. Like, we're just funny about it. <laughs> Her and I used to laugh because every... She was my partner on Dancing with the Stars. So okay. she is like my most recent like main dance teacher. You know yeah. what I mean? And we would laugh because every Friday I would have a mental breakdown. Yeah. And it was never her being mean to me. She was always so fucking nice to me, even when I was being a shit and didn't deserve to be nice to her. Like, and I needed to be told to get my act together. She like, I just always as a dancer put so much pressure on myself. You know what yeah. I mean? That like, 
that's just how it is as a dancer, you yeah. know? I mean, I guess everyone took it differently, you know what I mean? Because other people obviously don't like Abby yeah. now, right? Yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's a thing. I think... I guess it's just different. She speaks really Everyone's highly of JoJo. Like, I feel like I saw yeah. her say, like, saying later on, like, she's been so successful. I'm so proud of her. That's the thing. Like, I know that I would not be where I am today without Abby, without Dance Moms, without those producers. Like, if I could go back in time, I would do it all over again, you know? That's a flex. There are a, most, I would say most people that have gone through the Dance Moms ring have come out and been like, fuck that. You yeah. know what I mean? And I don't know. I just... I'm a firm believer of like remember where you came from and that's not to say that they're wrong for how they're yeah. they're treating it. They're, you validate their feelings. Yeah, it's, but it's yeah. it's so true too for like all of reality TV because if you think about anyone who's come out of like the hills or something everybody has so much shit to talk about <laughs> like the show. Yeah. And it's like but you have everything you have now because of the show. And I mean, it's it like might have been a horrible experience for you. Yeah. yeah. But you like you can't. And I do yeah. think like Maddie and I mean Kenzie especially Kenzie was six when she started and so like no. she didn't know what she was getting herself into you know what I mean yeah. and like Maddie and, and that's all and on the parenting was a well. good, another all good the parenting, mom though yeah. she let them stop when they wanted to stop yeah. yeah yeah and that was the thing like they're I think Maddie and Kenzie when their contract was up that's when they left mm -hmm. um and I could be very very wrong on that so mm -hmm. don't hold me to that but there was a lot of t dance moms. I will say you could leave at any point in time. There was a set psychiatrist. And yeah. at any point in time, if you, uh, the kids on the show, she would always say, when you want out, tell me, yeah. I can get you out. And so like, we always had that. That's crazy. That's good. But in the moment, you didn't want to. You know what I yeah. mean? Like I wouldn't. Oh, I'm fucking nine on a show. I'd be like, let me go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I really want to talk about really quickly? Give it to me. Because I don't know if you've ever talked about it on a podcast. Ooh. And maybe you have. And maybe you have. I don't know. I grew up on Full House. I love Full House. <laughs> <laughs> and I was rocking with DJ Tanner. Okay. But now you ain't. Is she's the only person who ever has like publicly detested you coming out right or no? even before I came out Jody Sweden has always been so sweet to me Andrea Barber has always been Stephanie, so sweet right? to me mm -hmm. yes yeah, Stephanie Kimmy um, Joey Danny bless Bob Saget um, and uh, 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 John Stamos Uncle Jesse always so kind to me yeah Olivia the fact that you Jade, know all of those people I guess, is insane <laughs> yeah yeah I guess Aunt Becky was busy well <laughs> no, Aunt, no I was Aunt, just about to Aunt say Aunt Becky was Oh, yeah, she was. Sorry. Aunt, she was, Aunt Becky, who was Lori Laughlin, yeah. was Olivia Jade. Her daughter was on my season of Dancing with the Stars. She <laughs> oh, was always so kind to me. Love yeah, Olivia Jade. Yeah, yeah. Love Olivia. So sweet. Um, uh, 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 yeah, so, yeah. Candace has a wee of a homophobic past, and that's okay. <laughs> a wee. <laughs> Just a wee. Um, and that's, it is what it is. Um yeah and anyway so i had an experience with her when i was 11 at the fuller house premiere where she was not nice to me but to your face to my face yeah so i can i ask how yes yes so look it's gonna sound like i'm being dramatic but put yourself in my shoes you're talking to me so. <laughs> <laughs> like, no bets are off all yeah. bets are off so um everyone was so nice i was 11 baby i loved full house my whole life like it's my safety show i watch it before uh -huh. i fall asleep like i love it and I go up to her and I've talked to everybody that whole night. Everybody knew who I was, yada, yada, yada. I go up to her. I'm like, hi, can I take a picture with you? I love you. She says, no, fine, fine. Like, I don't care. I get it. Like, I've also like been there. Fucking bitch. I understand. I've never said no to a picture, <laughs> but like, I can understand why people do sometimes. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, it's okay. Like, no worries. And she was like, maybe later. And I was like, that's fine. Turn around. And then within like three seconds, I turned back around and she was taking pictures with other kids. And so it was really like I was hurt as an eleven-year-old. Yeah. So, anyways, cut at to eleven, like, that would have I would have literally carried shattered. that with me to my grave. Yes. So shattered. She was the like only person that's ever said no to me. And then it wasn't that she said no, but to taking a picture with me. I should people have said no to me, but like said no to taking a picture with me to my face, and then They're taking turned around and did people. it with other people. Yeah. You know that's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> so then, cut to a few years later, uh, like a year, two years ago, I did a TikTok. Where it was like the trend to like flash your phone and like show like, I have a crush on this person. Yeah. I don't like this person. So I did that and I said, rudest celebrity that I've ever met was her. Blew up on the internet and I was like, fucking hell. Like, and we, people could see it. 
people paused it to figure out it was her. You couldn't. I would have done it. Then they compared the silhouettes and like it was obvious. And I was like, fuck me, right? So anyways, it got really public. We have mutual friends. So she reached out through our mutual friends. We had a phone call. She asked me to make a statement. I was like, no, I'm not going to make a statement. But if you do, like, I'll reply to it, clear the air. And so I did. And I I did regret posting what I posted because I was like, she like neither of us deserved the internet hate because all her people came at me. All my people went at her. And I was like, that's just, yeah. we don't need it. You know that, what I mean? But shit like that happens. I mean, it happens to me all the time where yeah. you just do something and you don't think it's going to be. And I think, I'm like, literally. This is a fun trend and kind of forget like how big it 19. really is. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I'm going to do shit that's wrong. And that's the worst thing that's wrong that I do, which is probably is the worst thing that I've done. Um, Good anyways, for you. Yeah. That's a win. A win is a win. A win is a, a win. Is a win. <laughs> um, anyways, so then it comes out a few months later that she started talking some pretty homophobic things. A few things came out about her privately that I know about. And I was just like, duh. Like, we, <laughs> we cleared the air. Like, I got a family of people that I got to stand up for. Like, yeah. so I called her out again. And I just was like, you know what? We are... She said some pretty, really bad stuff about the LGBTQ community. And I was just like, all right, we're never going to agree. We're never going to be friends. Yeah. And you tried. Like, I you tried. tried to make it right and give her a second I chance did. to be good. And, like, I do think she has a really unique platform where her following is very religious. She has a platform where she is able to have such a religious following that she could be like, hey, this is okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like That's she, what I mean. Like it's, and oh. she does quite the opposite. She makes yeah, it worse. And they value what she says, so it could be like really beneficial. It could for be like, super, yeah. Yeah. But you know, we're I just really never love agree. that about you, though. Like in so many situations, like even then, everything you've been saying, like you could have done something easier, mm-hmm. and you did like the right thing that was hard with like such bravery. And I just respect the shit out of it. I'm not I gonna try, lie man. To I try to be brave. You you really, really <laughs> fucking are. And you always have been. I've known you for you. so fucking long. And it's just, it's When's awesome to see you. the first time we met? Can I please tell the story? Yes, because I don't, I know what story you're about to tell, but I can't picture like my age. I can't picture when. So okay. give it to me in as much detail. I was either 17 or 18. And we're like four and a half years apart. So I would have been like 14. I don't even think you want me 13. to tell the story. <laughs> oh no. I think I was 17. Um, I was at VidCon. And not supposed to be there. You were definitely a featured creator. I definitely wasn't. But I was in the fucking featured creator area. And I think I met your mom or your family member. Someone who was with you first. I was with my manager. And we were just talking, whatever. And I think it was your mom. And I think she was like, my daughter loves you. Like, whatever. Like, was talking to me, whatever. She was like. And your parents have always kind of let you figure the world out on your own. Like, yeah. you don't even know, like if our daughter's going to be so fucking famous, exposed to the whole world, like I'd rather her see some shit and teach her the right way than act yeah. like the world doesn't exist. Yeah. So you had stumbled across my videos <laughs> and I'm standing with these like ropes, like VI, we're inside of like VIP ropes, right? <laughs> and I see Jojo, I, Bible, I think you did a cartwheel. Um, and you're oh, like exactly. down, you're down the hall from like me talking to your mom and you see that I'm talking to her and you start charging <laughs> charging charging at me my manager and your mom and i swear to god i think you did some type of like trick like a cartwheel like some type of thing no and you, me. and you hop this rope and you come up to me and you go you're a <laughs> you're a you're a you're a <laughs> and we're in the middle of this <laughs> fucking room and everyone's heads just turned that's the first thing she says to me she's like i i just i saw that video and i think you're so funny and your mom was like this and i was like I don't even think I said anything. <laughs> she didn't about the Bible. You're okay. In my defense, at that age, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. no, 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 because it's hilarious. I didn't know what that meant yeah, at, at all. That age. At all. And I think I said nothing. Your mom was I wasn't like, about to. <laughs> I but wasn't, my mom probably didn't know. Yeah, <laughs> you know at what all. I mean? And I, to, I think I said nothing back because I was just like, I didn't know. I don't know if you knew either, you know, and I wasn't about to be like, you're yeah. back to you. Like, you know what I mean? And then we didn't, at that time, like you were way younger and I was like 17 or whatever. And I don't think we actually became like real, real friends until I was probably like 19 or 20. You were a little bit older and yeah. I just started seeing you at events and I yeah. love your whole family. So I'd, I'd met your brother like a million times at this point. So. Oh my God. My brother met, like, I think y'all were at Playlist Live together. Yes. My brother was like, I met Tana. We're going to become great friends. <laughs> Honestly, I fucking love him. I really, really, awesome. really do. And then. Yeah, over time, then I just started coming to your parties and like just different stuff yeah. like that. I don't really know how it like just escalated. Yeah, or, 
what I remember happened. seeing you at Whore Nights. Oh, yes. And, like, that was the first time that I, like... Whore Nights. I was, like, sounds on brand. Yeah. <laughs> Practically. For Tana, it was. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I I'm think I kidding. was a whore that night. I actually remember I was with an embarrassing-ass TikToker. I don't even want to say it. Anyways. <laughs> so embarrassing i think i remember you were with we're talking about god loving motherfuckers anyways <laughs> um, um anyways yeah i remember that night like i felt like i was able to go up to you and be like not a friend but like i felt like oh i'm not just a fan of this girl anymore yeah. like she's like we're like a homie because vibe. we freaked out seeing each other i was like, yeah, oh, yeah like, was like we were thing. excited we were excited yeah. to see each other um yeah yeah and then time just went on and you've always been so and then Tana and I, asked me to do a weed commercial yeah, no, I'm asking, and I was like, boy did thing. she but you are just like so welcoming I think that was really cool because even just all of the events and parties and shit that you've had you wanting me there always meant a lot to me because I was like listen I'm not this girl's brand you know what yeah. I mean and then after you came out and stuff and we're you know finding your adulthood we found more common ground and yeah. stuff because it's I was like yes you're being you and like I'm so proud yeah. of you like that I think too um, like even though <clears> you were never my brand like i mean that's uh, we 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 never we never had the same demographic is a better way to put it yeah but then like meeting you in person and like just like over the four minutes that we would hang out at a time over the course of six years probably three times you know what i yeah. mean we had very similar vibe personality values yeah. not that what we were putting out into the world was fake but yeah. at some point it's like you just kind of can have a conversation with somebody and it vibes or it doesn't. And you know? both of us also, I feel like, have the type of brand where people assume we are only what they see. Yeah. You know, like like that I'm only crazy and I'm only rogue you and you're all... I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> and you're all bows and glitter and sunshine. Yeah. And in reality, like, you can be, like, real and super chill yeah. and I can not be a demon. Like, yeah. you know, so we can relate on certain yeah. things, which is good. And I was always surprised, too, that, like, you you keep up with all the the drama side of shit like you know what i mean i did back in the day now yeah. i'm a mess now like yeah. i know nothing i literally i just did a show i don't know if y'all watch vanderpump um i love you vanderpump. love vanderpump so i just did special forces with tom sandoval okay and isn't he in the midst of like he yeah. is in the midst of like the biggest cancellation in the sure world is, really. and i know what did he do like the, the girl wore a shirt like he told her not to wear the shirt when she had the sex and then she released shirts or that's I mean, I love that like, That's scandal. like such a tiny little thing, but basically he was like with somebody for like <laughs> seven years and he was sleeping with her best friend the whole time. And oh, then, okay, I knew that. And then he said, you kept your shirt on during sex and that's where the shirt thing came from. Okay, okay, okay. Beats me all of it. <laughs> yeah. And so like there was moments when we would be together because how Special Forces is, is you are together for up to eight days. I can't say how long I was there for. Um, but you can quit at any point, but it is 24 hours on camera but there's no producer director cameraman around it's all pretty much robo um you you sleep in like accommodations that are like like uh, not beds i mean it's two metal things you're in the same room as big as this with each other like it's 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 military training basically okay. so it's it's very it's very real i i would die you would not last 24 I, hours. I, I love you die. so much. You would never make it. I don't it. think I'd last 20 minutes. <laughs> like, holy yeah, fuck. Yeah, it's very intense. So um, what is that? Can you talk about what that entails? Like, things you did? Yeah. Um. So I can I can talk about things that have been, like, in the trailers. Um. So we... There's so many wild challenges, Um. tasks. We, every day, would do... Fuck, I can't talk about how many we would do a day. But, so, just some of the challenges... There was this one that um, they love airing. It's um, we called it the Ternasium. Um, but basically, it's like two ladders, and you have to walk across them, like kind of waddle like a baby across yeah. them. And you're on there's just three hundred feet below you, and you have to make it across or fall. Um, and it's wobbly. I mean, you're roped in, and like you're gonna free fall for three seconds, and then the rope will stop you, and then they have to drag you back up. Um, there was one where you had to I army crawl across a singular rope across two mountain peaks. Again, 300 feet up. Um, I'm watching this. Uh, 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 underwater helicopter submersion. We were in New Zealand filming, so it was freezing cold. Um, and they, the helicopter lowers you to the point where it the pressure starts to collapse. And it's freezing water, so you start to hyperventilate. And you have to wait till the helicopter lands at the bottom. And then you have to get yourself out. And, I mean, it's... It's changed my life. Jojo? It's what? 
It's, what did you say? So do you have a death wish? Like, why would you put yourself through that? We had a submarine yeah, vibes. Yeah, there. I mean, there's so Too much soon. that went. I mean, there there is. Have y'all seen the trailer for it? I've, I've I no, haven't I seen it. So. Okay, I'm I want to show you the trailer. Wait, for I want to see because it. it'll put a lot into perspective. Like you'll be like, oh shit. I'm gonna do it on the phone, Jojo. Sorry, we're poor. No, um, no, you're not. We'll Get insert it though. It'll be coming out on this see. course. The cold is gonna be the great equalizer. <laughs> what? This is far beyond anything I'm about to experience in my life. Why are you here? The whole country's pissed off at me. I had she made it sound like it was a Tuesday. A few of you, if any, will remain at the end of this course. I want to see what I'm capable of doing. Yeah. This is going to be challenging. I can't imagine the tea you got on set with all of them. I can't do it. I can't do it. And emotionally. Use my love. What's on your heart right now, my man? Uh, my daughter drowned in our neighbor's pool. I guess um, I want clarity. I get bullied a lot. I just wish I could be a stronger person. You've come to the right place. It's gonna be a big drop. Hope you prepare for this. <laughs> Through the scale of building. As much hard times as there is here, there's also a lot of accomplishment. I'd give to go to dinner with my family. Jojo. Jojo. When does this air? September 25th. Holy September shit. I'm 25th. so excited. That's my like fucking. That's I know. My show. Like that's so my kind of show. Yeah. We're binge watching. You should. That. We're gonna have um uh uh every week we're gonna have a party. Not the first week, but every week I at my house we're gonna do a watch party. Any excuse to just go to your fucking house. <laughs> your house is a museum. It's like pretty gnarly. You you know someone has really made it as like a, I was going to say in the beginning when I was trying to think of what to call you like it's not the only word but it's one of them like you were an enterprise Thank you. like and obviously also a singer entrepreneur talented dancer all of it but I'm just saying you are and you know someone has made it to that level of like a list they're an enterprise when you go to their house and shit is in glass boxes and <laughs> mannequins and we got rid of the mannequin cases <laughs> I wish you never did I, oh, man, just, I, I, go. I think I took 500 photos last you time did. I was at your house like I just felt like I was I love Trisha Paytas's house is like that too like certain people just yeah. you, Paris Hilton like just certain people have houses they're where so like like branded like themselves and they yeah. keep everything which i think is so cool it's something i definitely yeah. regret like not doing but Keeping everything yeah um do you so you you were just saying to us off camera you have a place here that you kind of use as storage have yes. you kept everything everything jojo I've archives everything i have every costume um i have like all my tour props i have everything your kids one day are gonna have the sickest life do you i want, love you, that you though that's I want kids tomorrow. Oh I want God, kids I immediately. That. I was telling Jojo, like, I never will have a guest and be like, will you FaceTime my friend? Because if it's like my grown ass friends and they're asking me and they're excited about a yeah. guest, I'm like, fucking fuck off. But that you are, I was, I asked you nervously because you're the first time I've ever asked someone. <laughs> Ari's like <laughs> little sister nervous. is like 10 and she loves you. And we just called she's her and nine. she had a Jojo oh, wait, no, she's on. Eight. She's eight. Oh, she's eight. Precious. And your interaction with her was so good. You've had so Thank much you. training meeting kids your whole life as yeah. a kid and not like, and with kids. Yeah, you know? I've kind of learned how to talk to somebody while they don't talk to you. Yeah. And it's been able to be a really great thing because sometimes I talk to kids who physically can't talk back to yeah. me. You know, like I've done a lot with Make-A-Wish yeah. where some kids physically cannot speak. And it's interesting to like learn I've really learned how to read a kid and how to once I find that thing that makes them smile like keep going at it you know what I mean and once I find what they're interested in like I asked her if she was in second grade and she was like no I went to the mall today you know what I mean but if she'd been like <laughs> yeah. yeah I'm in second grade I'd be like oh what's your favorite subject in school you yeah. know what I mean like you'd keep going on that yeah um yeah I don't know I just I love little little babies I think they're awesome I think they make the world a better place and I can't wait to bring a bunch of them into the world. I can't wait. Your kids really are going to have the sickest, sickest cool. life. Like, do, you, fun life. do you find that like your audience now is, do you think it's still like very young demographic or it's, do you think they've kind of grown with you a bit? A little bit of both. So I kind of have an all over the place demographic. It's really confusing. So I have like the little littles now. Like one of my best friends, Baby, is always like, I want JoJo Boba's show show. 
and yeah. they're not mm-hmm. even two yet. You that know what me I mean? Yesterday, I was like, Georgia with the <laughs> <laughs> um, And then there's like the like eight year olds who are like into it, like into like hold the drama. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know what I mean? And like into the bows, into the slime, into the YouTube videos. Then there's like the fourteen year olds that were eight, you know, six years ago, and they like kind of grew up with me. And then there's like the seventeen year olds who are like the Dance Moms fan base now, like that's just watching Dance Moms. And then there's like the 25 year olds who liked Dance Moms back in the day. You know what I mean? Holy it's like, shit. and, and it's I feel like you probably have place. like the whole gay community I was gonna now. Say, that's the like girls gay icon. It's crazy. Yeah, there's like, like, it just it's so <laughs> growing, and it's I don't understand either myself how it gets younger, but it's because I mean YouTube's out well, it there still for forever. Exists. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I'm kind of the first. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're an anomaly. Everyone before me was, I mean, Miley, and she had Hannah Montana, and then Hannah went away, and she became Miley. You know, Demi had Sunny with a Chance, and then that all went away, and Camp Rock went away, and now she's Demi. You know what I mean? They're Demi. Um, They wanted to, like, eliminate it, though. Yeah. I I think you're just rocking back to she now, by the way. I I believe so, too. Yeah. 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 It, I don't know. Why did I say that? Any of the <laughs> It's okay. Yeah, go ahead. Because go ahead she said Demi they, Lovato. Yeah, like, and then I, I said she I and they. I felt like this whole conversation like, was going to be hard Demi's to navigate. also just, I mean, Demi's, Demi's the fucking coolest. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely awesome human. Nice human. Ever. Awesome. Anyways, I don't remember what I was talking about because ADHD is really, really high gear. But. That was us too. The demographic. The demographic. Yeah, the demographic. Well. It's younger and younger. Like Boomerang. You'll love this because like, you know YouTube numbers. Boomerang was released. <laughs> Oh, I hate doing this to myself. Seven years ago, almost eight. God, you're so old. I, <laughs> it's fucking twenty. But when you think about it, like seven, like think about it, like a whole seven year old child, like yeah, that's yeah. huge. That's like grown. You know what I mean? Yeah. So boomerang seven years ago, and it still gets about two hundred thousand views a day. Yeah. She's so rich. <laughs> <laughs> it's all I can take. Get from out it. of here. It's, a day. And the touring. I didn't even talk about that. Like, was touring your meal? Was touring harder than Dance Moms? I love tour so much. Yeah. Like, being on tour is my favorite thing in the world. Mm-hmm. I can't imagine I, your bus. It's probably, the bus probably talks to you on some Elon Musk. <laughs> uh, we call it the Four Seasons on Wheels. <laughs> yeah, if, I can't imagine. <laughs> Um, the Ritz on wheels just Jojo on the side all yeah. over I wanted to wrap my bus and they wouldn't let me for security because I was yeah. still a kid well, and, yeah that's probably um, but valid. we got to wrap a truck we wrapped a truck instead okay. but yeah no I mean my tour was wild we did 134 shows and I got doing a arenas. tattoo dev- devoted to it um, you did like stadiums arenas I right? did arenas yeah oh. I, uh, you know the O2 arena in London yes I became the youngest person to ever headline and sell out the O2 Arena in London. The, look at my goosebumps. You can see them from <laughs> here. That is so insane. It's crazy. That is, God, oh my God. That's like for anybody who wouldn't know the O2, that's like comparable to Madison Square Garden here yeah. or the Staples that Center. That is so yeah. insane. Like the like big arena there. I can't. What's that feeling when you walk out to the O2 Arena and it's sold out and you're how old? I was 16. Holy fuck. I was a baby. And you're just so normal now. I would have been off my rocker. Oh my God. <laughs> like it would have been over for me already. Yeah. Yeah. The feeling, the feeling on stage never gets old and yeah. every crowd is different. It's mm. wild. And there's similarities, but every crowd is different. Every crowd is unique. Me agreeing. Like I'm ever going to play an arena. Get out of here. But you know, like you don't it's yourself short. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm for no two <laughs> arena don't want this. Yes, <laughs> they do. <laughs> you kill me. Continue. I'm um, sorry. I don't know. It's just like, I feel like I, I can't be nervous when I'm on stage. I can't mess up when I'm on stage. Like it just feels so comfortable. It's the like, it's the strangest feeling. And it just feels like the ability that I can go like this and they'll scream. Like it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's the most love you ever feel. And I, we always just talk about like the tangibility of it. Like you see the numbers online. The but when tangibility. It wasn't me. It. No, it wasn't me. Someone else is making words up. I love it. Um, but like actually seeing the faces and the numbers and the, seeing it in it's person crazy. is just the craziest feeling. And with you, it's probably nuts too because every kid's got a bow on and a fucking a t-shirt yeah, and an and arm warmer. Like, I started the whole wearing a costume thing to the really, concert. Every really little did. child came dressed as me. Every single Absolutely. one of them. Oh. Yeah. Oh, she started Eras tour. I started that. Every kid <laughs> yes. came in a JoJo outfit with a I JoJo came bow. today, JoJo. It's a thing. Yeah. It's a <laughs> thing. I feel like like mm. now people are gonna come to like my new music concerts. Yeah. As 
old JoJo. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I'm here for it. I, I mean, it's just an iconic forever thing. You know yeah. what I mean? And like, and I think like all, if Britney Spears had an arena concert tomorrow, people would come as Hit Me Baby one more time. So yes. it's just you're an icon. You know what I mean? Thank you. Um, and I think like I'll let that part of me live for forever. Like there will be yeah. some sort of tribute. Yeah. To old me, I kind of I toured around this idea of like when I go out on an adult music tour to do, I mean, I think I'll always perform Boomerang. I feel like that's yeah. like my, yeah. my baby. But then like. And I like that you don't resent it. Like no, you're down. not at all. It's cool. And then, I mean, I have 20 something other songs. Yeah. And I was kind of thinking like, it might be kind of fun how like Taylor has her surprise songs that she does mm -hmm. to do that. But like, which baby Jojo song will I sing that night? Yeah. And just do a different one every night. And as your so voice fun. matures, like doing like a, a slowed down rendition yeah, like a of something version. that was yeah. like an old song. Yep. Yeah. Which is really cool. I can't wait to go to the show personally. Like I'm so excited. Oh, it's going to be so fun. Back to everyone wearing everything and all of that type of stuff. The reason why I actually had you on the podcast is because I saw you on, I don't know his name, one of the David Dobrik adjacents. What's, you were just on his podcast. Yeah, um, Joe. Joe. Literally um, today. I saw that. That's why I DM'd you. I was like, oh, she's doing some podcasts. Let's yeah. see. You know, I'm I'm reaching for the stars here, just like the weed commercial. Let's see if she'll be canceled. <laughs> and I know you're, I might just make you repeat yourself, but I, I want to know and talk about it right now. How many SKUs of different JoJo products are there? Oh my God. I wish I knew that answer. Um, I know of bows there's something like I know it's with an eight there's either 800 or 8,000 different styles of bow just just bow, bow. I think it's 8,000 of just bows different ribbons different sizes different shape like just, will you give me the quick bullet point rundown of everything that Jojo Siwa like products sells? yes so it's easiest to do categories so there's, yeah, there's no yeah way no that's products. what I mean that's yeah what I mean. so there's apparel accessories bedding home goods food and beverage <laughs> Toys, electronics, books, like DVDs, CDs, um, party shit, party, party supplies, shit. Yeah. Um, cosmetics, shoes. I guess that'd be an apparel. There's lit God, literally somebody did like a house tour. I forget what it was, but I saw a house tour where they like y you have like a room, yep, and it's like all the different kinds. It's like yep. a JoJo store, yeah. Yes. Like, I we used to. Oh, maybe it was Northwest. <laughs> we used to play this like game of like name a product and yeah. like. I can tell you if I have it or not. And like people would name all those random products and I were like band-aids. She's like, yes. yeah, cookware, like, Jojo <laughs> cookware. Yes. I have like plates and forks, like, like little kids sets. Um, hairbrush. <laughs> yes. Duh. Toothbrush. Yes. Duh. Singing and not singing. I'm like, shit. Singing I have it. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is I heard for six years on a microphone. I'm going to get hot like some of boomerangs. I'm, I'm going to come back like a boomerang. <laughs> That is so, so, God, that's so cool. And it's so, just going to be forever and ever and ever. And your kids are going to be like, what You the can't fuck? go to Walmart yeah. or Target without seeing your face. Nah, you know who it sucks for is my exes. Oh, that's my the biggest God. flex and the most <laughs> thing ever. Sorry, sorry. I know this is family is, friendly. No. That is so, that's I'm, like my dream. <laughs> I'm very, my first ex, I'm very good friends with yet. Mm. Um, and, and I always, she's a great human. I feel very inclined to speak highly of her. Yeah. There's a good way to put it. Um, mm. Couldn't figure out those words. But like we joke around all the time. She's like, damn, I can't, I can't go to Target. She's like, I cannot go to Target without seeing your face. I would cry. And, yeah, that we're able hysterical. to laugh about it. It's the most yeah, iconic being thing ever. JoJo in that situation, lit. 10 out of 10 would recommend being anyone else <laughs> in that situation. Oh my God. And I would just, I would be the person that wouldn't be the person in Target. You know, I would get the shit into that stick for sure. Um, Speaking of, uh, speaking very highly of your first ex, I don't know about this to this day. Um, the I know you made a TikTok where it was like, you were talking about one of your exes, like they just wanted the views. They used yes. you for views, right? Yes. Um, what is that drama? What happened? That's a great question. I wish I fully <laughs> knew myself. Um, I've. It was huge, though. I know it broke the internet. Yeah, it was, it was like massive. Big, yeah, like the gay TikTok. Yeah. So drama. I had a relationship like... that really that start that started public on the internet. <laughs> yeah. Was public on the internet <coughs> and ended public on the internet. <laughs> um, you learn a lot from that. Yeah, it's Tana everything, is everything too okay? Much. Are we all right? Do you need water? I'm popping a lot. Are you good? I'm good. Um, navigating relationships is very hard. Mm -hmm. Navigating lesbian relationships is even harder. Mm -hmm. And navigating relationships on the internet is... Lesbian relationship on the internet. And lesbian too, relationship God. on the internet is, is yeah. good night. Yeah. Yeah. Triple, triple homicide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really... It's, it's <laughs> tricky. And I'm young. Listen, yeah. like I... It's not a rule book either. There's not no, a handbook. There's not for that. a rule book. There's been multiple cases where I have been 
without a doubt used whether that's mm. for views whether that's for money whether that's for experience like mm. and and that is fine it's happened multiple times i mean it's not fine but it sucks yeah it sucks part but of specifically we, an instant i was very deep in a relationship and i kind of just wanted it to fizzle and yeah. we had kind of talked about it fizzling and i was fine with that like she was fine with that and then all of a sudden out of nowhere um, I was being made out to be a very bad guy on the internet. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's not cool. Like, cause, because look, at the end of the day, I'm at this point in time, 19. Yeah. At this point in time, she was 23. Yeah. We're both very, very young. Yeah. There's no need for anybody on the internet to be the bad guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we've, both messed up we which is a mature standpoint at 19 yeah, yeah and i thank you i just i tried to keep it clean because i've learned over the years the like power yeah. kind of that i can have with the internet and yeah. i don't want to use that for ill ever yeah. and i have and i've messed up absolutely mm -hmm. and i've learned from it for example with the ccb incident like mm -hmm. i learned like that's not fun <laughs> for me CCB. to shit on people on the internet i don't yeah. like it i have too much of a voice and too big of a platform to do that. And so now with relationships, I'm very careful, very sensitive, not me to taking this in. I'm like, okay, yeah, man. I, um, <laughs> I just, I've learned what to share and what not to share. And I'm very proud of myself because I've had two talking to situations that the internet has never found out about. Yeah. And that makes me feel like I've learned, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And it, it's, it's just good. It's better. That's good. I, like, I feel like I get, I get what you're saying from that situation and it's hard cause it's hard. And there's just a lot that the internet doesn't get to see, uh -huh. you know what I mean? And I think once it was right in front of my face and I saw it and I was like, Oh, there's a camera up and you're acting like this. And now the camera's away yeah. and you're acting like this. And it's a shit feeling. It's and a shit feeling. And the internet only sees what the camera was filming. They don't yeah. see what happens when it went away. Oh my God. And, yeah, that, and they believe what they saw. And that's what was really hard for me to navigate is like, I knew what was going on, but there was no possible way for the internet to fully know. And so without you using the power to be like, yeah. So yeah, you once I realized your audience, yeah, I feel like once, that's really like mature though. Once I, like, I realized there was no, it was a lose, lose situation. I was like, all right, well, I'd rather lose like this. You know what yeah. I mean? And I feel like it's it's hard because you want to love freely. You're still just a person. You yeah. know what I mean? And having to learn from that. Like, unfortunately, so many people look it's at hard. you as a meal ticket, yeah. you know, in, instead of who you are even as a like person. Even like my last two talking to situations, I've been like, no, they're not using me. There's no way they would be. And then after I'm done, yeah. I look at it and I'm like, fuck yeah like, when you're in it if you can't see it for i really is, I'm like, i hope you have people around you who also are like try to be aware of that like i'm so i've had so many situations with ari where he's like ari like tana like yeah he wake wants up. to yeah he wants to be in that tiktok and he wants yeah. to go on that plane yep. and he wants to you know and it's just and like, like i i just had this happen where i was i was with someone not not dating not anything but talking and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they like really launched TikTok, like really hard launch. And oh, yeah, I was perfect. just like, what a, what a good time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, that's a little convenient. You know what I mean? Like I get the intention now why you wanted to be closer to me because you wanted, again, like you weren't using me for cloud, but you were using me for experience and knowledge. And that's yeah. cool, but don't trick me to be in love with you. Like I'll be your friend and do that. You know yeah. what I mean? And, and just be honest about that 100%. Yeah. Like, it's just acting, like, out of nowhere. Like, yeah. I, I just really want to do this TikTok trend. I want to make an account and be on TikTok today. Yeah. It's like, oh, you... No. Like, yeah. you know, which is just, like, yeah. a whole... But it's hard. Thing. It's been... It's... Out of all the things I've done, dating's been the hardest, for yeah. sure. It's, it's just... I don't know. And I'm... My life is very public. Everything about my life is public. Yeah. And uh, my my second relationship was with somebody who was public on the internet already. But like my first, for example, was massive learning because she wasn't on the internet. And mm. so immediately when we started dating, I was like, how do we navigate this? Because I didn't want to shove it onto her. And she was very good. My first girlfriend was very good about being okay with whatever, but not ever doing it herself. Like yeah. she didn't care. But if I was like, babe, there's this TikTok that couples are doing. Are you down? She would be down. You know what I yeah. mean? Like we had a very good dynamic. And you'll find that again. It just is fucking hard. It's just so hard. Yeah. My yeah. dad said the other day, oh my God, I love my dad so much. He's the best. He's a but he was like, love is so easy to find. You just have to look for it. And I was like, 
Bitch, I've been looking. Wait, I'm I've been searching. Looking. Like, I, I got binoculars. I got a fucking telescope. I got it all. I'm yeah. searching, dog. I got Absolutely. a map. I got it all. I know. Yeah. I know. It's just, ugh, it's like a whole. It's hard. But you're going to find the most amazing person. I am you the are best an amazing single friend right now. Really? Every single one of my people is in a relationship. Every single one of them. Oh, my. And are I you, would make it everybody's problem. I, I would make everybody miserable. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm like, fuck your happiness. I try to. No, I just make happy. them tell me the bad. Like, yeah. I am everybody's. <laughs> confide in like tell me the shit that's going on in your relationship mm-hmm. so that way i don't want one that yeah. does help. oh wow that's honestly it smart. works that does help like i don't want what you have yeah someone's like oh my god we're so cute we just went on a date i'm like what's your last fight about yep like, yes that i yeah. literally straight up ask my brother i'm like what do you and your girlfriend fight about yeah i asked my best friend i'm like what are you guys like what's stressing you out right now <laughs> That's, I'm going to start doing Not that. That's an amazing way to navigate that. It helps, that. yeah. Oh my God, Northwest. Oh, I love that little kiddo. She's awesome. So what was that like? Really cool. <laughs> I don't, I mean, North is awesome. It, I, 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 we, yeah, Kim was great. Kim, Kim is my favorite. You're going to love this story. My favorite was North is at my house. North was little. North was only five. This was probably four years ago, five years ago. And she made a mess. She made a mess with slime. Like, yeah. sequins went everywhere. And I am a YouTuber. Like, I don't give a crap. It's better for me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, let it go everywhere. And it goes everywhere. The camera's cut. And Kim, Kim Kardashian, like, also, like, send the nanny. Like, I didn't expect Kim to come, but whatever. Mm-hmm. Kim came. Kim was like, where's your broom? Like, let me sweep this up. I was like, Aww. Kim Kardashian, you are not about to sweep my floor. Get out of here. That's sweet Like, as imagine hell. if I was like, oh, in the pantry, Cinderella. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> she really would have probably she so would have she's so sweet she what was her house like i never you been there oh they only came to your house yeah they only came to my house um we, we need a, JoJo a North bunch, reunion. sent her a bunch of stuff she came to the concert uh, she came to my birthday party it's just so sweet so nice the kids oh, of course but the i mean kim is awesome what like, does she smell like beautiful asking oh, for a friend. i knew it <laughs> no you're not <laughs> you're asking for yourself. just like just like you would imagine i'm the friend yeah. she looks just like you would imagine yeah she smells just like you would imagine like is she's perfect and is north like so funny kanye like so <clears throat> this was at the time when north was still really little and she was really shy i remember mm-hmm. seeing the video north like didn't want to talk but not i feel like all. now i wonder what north would be like now because now i feel like she's really come into herself i mm-hmm. would facetime her and she would talk so much she would she would talk with her friends she would talk with me she would sing she would dance then at the house she was yes no i get that yes, i was so no. shy i would have had a stroke probably if i met you and i was fucking fine and the house like it's like straight up it's disney world like the house that yeah i think you see your face in your house maybe fifty thousand. and years. also it's really tricky for little kids to process that i'm the same as what they're seeing on youtube like they don't yeah. they don't process that i'm a real human you know yeah, if i met hannah montana it would have been someone would have had to take me to the hospital game literally over. the hospital she when oh my god i met miley in person and i literally shit my pants she is oh just it makes me everything. sick i like still like like her so much it's like unhealthy and i should probably be same in institutionalized we all should be 100 i'm the biggest miley stan ever mm, i just saw a thing to, like we were talking about the archive <laughs> earlier she said that she has 21 storage units with all the stuff that her fans have made her really miley she keeps everything she said i need to start that means she still has my t-shirt that i gave her on the bangers to her (laughs) jojo she has your t-shirt oh my god who else do you stand miley lady gaga freddie mercury elton john Uh uh-huh uh-huh have you met elton john oh yeah he's what was that like so it's actually it's kind of funny it's a good story um so it was it was the best story (laughs) my miley story is also a really good one that one made that one stuck okay so i'll I'll do elton first then miley second miley's (laughs) such a good story so elton so it's his concert this is i was baby i was 15 so i hadn't even gone on tour yet for like context of how young i was Mm. and i was about to go on tour my tour tickets were on sale like crazy same (laughs) right same um tour company both with aeg and so we were on the list for his meet and greet because it was his concert and what happens elton he wakes up and he decides i'm gonna i'm gonna do my meet and greet or i'm not and that day he woke up and he decided he was not gonna do the meet and greet fine Whatever. So it's Don't before the show. Don't give me any show. ideas. No, I'm just kidding. That's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not. I almost said it before you did. <laughs> so he uh, he decided no, and then we're in our seats, and the president of AEG comes out to me, and she's like, change of plans. After the show, Elton wants to meet you. Come back to where we were. And I was like, cool, great. So we go back to where we were. We probably wait for like 20 minutes after the show. 
and we're chilling and then we go into this room and there's like these few boys in there and I didn't know who they were and then after they introduced themselves and then after my mom and I googled who they were and it was me and my mom in this room with two guys and Sasha Baron Cohen who is so Borat. Funny. oh so funny um and then they're like all right Jojo they took those boys in first because Sasha and Elton are close and they took them in first and then um they're like all right Jojo like come on Elton's ready for you and so my mom and I go and my mom like has her phone out videoing yeah. right and I mean, I was expecting, like, walk in, take a selfie, and dip, right? Yeah. Like, quick. And he, the security was like, put your phone away. And we were like, oh, like, sorry. Like, yeah. okay, like, you don't want to do any wrong, right? So we go in, and we're in Elton's dressing room. Oh, and so it's sick. me, my mom, Elton, his husband, Sasha, and the two friends. And that's that's it. Just squat in the dressing room. Go um, in. Dream Elton. blunt rotation. <laughs> <laughs> Bull <Borat. laughs> Elton, Elton's like hello darlings like braces my mom in a hug and a kiss on the cheek gives me a big hug he's like it's so nice to meet you you both look lovely did you enjoy the show like so kind so nice he's like take a look around look at my jewelry try on sunglasses whatever you like so then wow. cut to him and sasha are um sitting on the couch together and my mom and i for like 10 minutes have just been like staring at these sunglasses because there was never like a it was nice to meet you. Cue for us to leave. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So we we're just like awkwardly still standing there. He was like, just hang out. So we're hanging out. And then all of a sudden, um, Elton and Sasha started talking about the Bohemian Rhapsody movie. Uh-huh. And at this point in time, I am number one fan. Like, yeah. know every detail about this movie, every detail about the actors, every movie about Queen, like every detail You're about so Queen. so well-versed. Everything. I love it. Like, obsessed. Freddie Mercury, single-handedly, while he's passed away, changed my life. Yeah. And so he's talking about it, and Elton and Freddie were best friends and so he's talking about it and I'm losing my mind looking at these sunglasses I'm like mom listen to what they're talking about and then they get stuck and they're trying to figure out who did the vocals in the movie you're like and uh, Sasha was like um it's not Rami Malek that did it who was it and Elton was like yeah who did it It wasn't the actor they used some of Freddie's vocals but they mixed it with somebody else what was that guy's name I'm sitting by the sunglasses I'm like it's Mark Martell it's Mark Martell it's Mark Martell it's Mark Martell and my mom's like what and I was like the guy they're trying to come up with his name is Mark Martell and finally, after, like, they're stuck on this name for five minutes. Google it, right? Yeah. But finally, after, like, five minutes, I was like, it's Mark Martell. And I'm nervous. I'm 15. And Elton was like, what did you just say? He kind of looked over. And I was like, the guy you're trying to think of, it's Mark Martell. And Elton was like, come join us. And so then I'm sitting on a couch. It goes Elton John, me, Sasha Baron Cohen. My mom and Elton's husband are chilling. And we just chat for 45 minutes tell stories we just kind of tell them what i'm about to do like just all hanging out then we leave it i mean it was the best night ever um wow. when i came out to the world like a few days later i got a random number call from the uk and i i was like this is interesting answered it like kind of thinking it was a prank hello it's elton john called You're me fucking called me when lying. i came out oh my god yeah called Jojo. me unreal and just talked for probably 10 minutes saying how he was proud of me and it, it just unreal and then <sighs> Yeah, he invited me to come to his LA show. He, I went to a show of his in Australia. With um, met up with his husband there. Like, just had have had so many interactions. Done some stuff with that his is foundation. So like, amazing! Like unreal. that is that's so the sweetest cool. story. I think it's the best thing ever when someone's awesome. your idol and they supersede. You know, because people always say don't meet your heroes and it's scary. But when someone's your idol and you meet it's them, it's unreal. Yeah. Um. Okay, you ready for the Miley story? I, so, I was, I boy, was am I didn't. ready for the Miley story? <laughs> All right, POV. It's the worst day of my life. <laughs> it okay. is 2020. I love the story already. Okay. It is the w absolute worst day of my life. My mom calls me and she goes, Jojo, where the fuck is my wallet? And I was like, why are you yelling at me? I don't know where your wallet is. Your wallet, where'd you put it? Is it in the car? She's like, no, where'd you put it? You had it last. I was like, mom, I, I have not seen your wallet. Like I'm at tour rehearsals. She's driving on her way. And I was like, what do you mean? And then she was like, yesterday while we were eating, you threw the bag away and my wallet was in that bag. I think this is the end of the world. I go fucking dumpster diving to try to find her wallet. There's a big, like, big, big dumpster, right? I go dumpster diving. Imagine, like, an through the trash walking bags. by. Like, is that Jojo's you on the dumpster? Fully. My mom comes. She sees me in the dumpster. She's like, get out of there. We have this, like, big forgive moment. What happened was the dumpster had come and gotten picked up while it was gone. Like, there was no... But I went for it. Like, it... I'm talking it was the worst day of my life. I've never cried so much in my life, okay? Yeah. Anyways... 
So as we're walking back into my rehearsal studio, I hear, and where we rehearse, the, it, there's always people there. Like the rest of those days was the rooms with me, um, Megan Trainer, Justin Bieber, Kanye West. Oh my God. That's the arrangement of the rooms. Gaga rehearses like, there, Ari, it? everybody. Like, what's the address? I'm- yeah, no, literally it's <laughs> awesome to hang out there. So I'm walking back in and I hear 4x4 four four playing in the room and it's just a band, but I'm like, I know that beat. It's fucking 4x4 four by, four by Miley Cyrus. So I told my mom, I was like, that's Miley. Like, that's her song. So I go in and we hear no vocals, nothing. Then I'm on dinner break and I start hearing vocals. And I go back into my rehearsal with my choreographer and I told him, I was like, Richie, I would never do this. I will not be back in rehearsals tonight. I will be camping outside on this picnic table waiting for Miley to walk out so I can just see her. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. It's all I need. I've never met her when I was little, I said, two years old, I said, I want to be a brain surgeon or Hannah Montana. Like, she's oh. been my life. Oh. And so I sat at the picnic table for about two hours. And finally, I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to go in. People come into your rehearsals all the time. Kanye's crashed my rehearsals. Megan's crashed my rehearsals. <laughs> like, like literally, it's like Kanye's a Kanye's like, hey, JoJo. <laughs> he crashed an audition that I was having once. Like, it's like a thing at this place. So I was like, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to grow a pair of balls, go in, poke my head and say, hi, I love you and run out. Right? I'm in different clothes. I'm in a JoJo t-shirt and costume pants because I went dumpster diving and I had to change. Like, it's just been a fucking day. Uh So I go in and as I'm going to walk in, her security guard walks out and I like quickly like press buttons on the vending machine to look like I was not suspicious. Uh, Yes. Run back out. My mom was like, how was that? I was like, I didn't do it. Her security walked out. So then I was finally like 30 minutes later, I grew some courage again. And I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. I'm Mm -hmm. really going to do it this time. So I go in, and as I'm going in, her mom walks out, and I just start losing my mind. It's I would have been like, just yeah. excited to see Tish. Yeah, yeah, I like literally lost my mind, and I was She's just like, icon. I thought I was gonna get in trouble for like walking in there. And right behind Tish is Miss Smiley Cyrus, and I was just like, I, I was just gonna come in to say I love you, and you're awesome, and you're amazing. I don't want to interrupt. And she was like, Oh my God, you're JoJo, right? And I was like yes and she was like yeah i've seen you on the internet before and i was like or she was like yeah i've seen you on the internet before yeah. you know her deep ass who asked me voice yes and i was like oh my god i was like you have no idea i was like this has been the worst day of my life turned to the best day of my life like i couldn't even speak like i we took a picture i was losing my shit she was you know just being like how i am with little kids like she was just like being so kind so yeah. nice so fun and i was just like oh my god you're 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 my life what like i love you wearing she was wearing, she was so cute. She was wearing like, um, she had these little like leathery pants on. And um, was this in her like layering era? This was in like, like rocker era. <coughs> and era. so she was like, we're doing a full run through in two days. Do you want to come watch it? And I was like, um, fuck yes. Like lost yeah. my mind. That same day of that run through was supposed to be my friends and family show. And I walked into my rehearsals and I was like, guys, like cancel the friends and family show. I was like, Uh push it later. I was like, I'm going to have friends and family anymore. Yeah. Yeah, Just Miley. So then like I go home and like Miley messaged me on Instagram. I have a DM from Miley Cyrus. And she was like, hey, come to the studio at seven o'clock. And I was like, I will be there. Like, I don't know what time it was. but I was like, I'll be there. Went, watched her do a full performance. Um, She like, like, it was like her friends and family show, but all her people were like watching. You know what I mean? And I was there having the fucking time of my life. It's of a private Miley life. Cyrus concert. I would. I will died. never forget. She sang "Party in the USA," and she changed That's the lyrics. Um, uh, so far when my girls aren't around me, Steph and Lily not a Nashville party. As, all the CEOs let us. I guess me and JoJo never got the memo. I lost my mind. And then we did four by four. And I know the dance to four by four from the bangers tour. So I got up and we did the dance together. Oh she my would God. be like, she would swear and she'd be like, sorry. Like she like, we interacted the whole, she let me sing Wrecking Ball. I sang it off key. She said sorry to her vocal cords because I, I threw her off. Like just the best fucking, uh, best that is human. so iconic. She is that the best That just ruined my human. day because I can't handle how jealous I am. I'm not kidding. That's I'm, like I'm the no, one person I'm kidding. like, I'm, I'm jealous of myself three years ago. Like, <laughs> like, the fact that I can't relive that day every day of my life, like it. Worst day of your life to the absolute best day of your life, for sure. Literally. Have you ever met Gaga? No. So that's the bucket that's list. That's so next. That'll be The like thing six. with Gaga is Richie is my choreographer and Gaga, Richie's also Gaga's choreographer. 
there have been days where, because she'll rehearse there too, he will run back and forth between rehearsals. Uh huh. Between my rehearsal, her rehearsal, my rehearsal, her rehearsal. And he says all the time, he's like, come over. I was like, no, it has to be natural. Yeah. It's like, I can't pop in. But like, oh, I cannot wait for the day. I, I just know her. she would you love will. it. Would he will. He said that we, he talks to her a lot about me. <sighs> and like, there's like mutual love. Like she's. That's, I'm gagged for you. For I'm gagged. Moment. Yeah. I'm just knowing you. It's going to be the, like, you're going to be in like a helicopter with her, like a space uh, shuttle or some shit. Uh, like it's going to be like another insane story that so tops much. it all. Um, My dream is to be a Lady Gaga backup dancer. I know every I don't know if that dance. would be allowed, JoJo. I feel like people would be so excited that you were there. <laughs> <laughs> like, selling out our own stadium, trying to be a backup dancer. And I, but, but like, stadium. imagine yeah, if like, it's, like, it's like Josh Peck and Oppenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> Brooke, Brooke references Josh Peck and Oppenheimer. I've done it every episode the past seven episodes, but it's just like, so, like you it's can't pay so attention random. to anything else. Yep. Like if I went to a Lady Gaga concert and JoJo Siwa was the backup dancer, I'd be like, JoJo. I spent so much time in 2020 <laughs> learning every single one of her dances. And I tell Richie all the time, I'm like, there will be a day where something happens to a dancer and you need somebody that knows every step in one phone call and I will be that person I, I tell them all the time wait didn't, that didn't she do that one time she like brought a fan up yes. in the middle of the concert and yep. he knew every single like lick of choreography that like everything that's that gonna will be, be you me. that will I be me one day you. she's one in day. Vegas this weekend I'm like if you wanna go oh my god we should go oh, we just should. tell me your celebrity crush all this celebrity talk and I have to I like Miley Cyrus yeah <laughs> Miley Billy <sighs> Billy for sure. Um, Zendaya. Zendaya. Yeah. So just taste all around. Yeah. Like hottest it's, ever. it's interesting. Like I, <laughs> I lean towards uh, actually being attracted to masculine women. Yeah. Um, I, I think Billy, Billy is like my, I would love to see that crossover. Right. It, oddly, like it works. It me. works oddly. Like it, like it, like, it doesn't work so hard that like it actually might you know if what we I mean? see jojo with like lime green hair next week we'll know what's going on <laughs> for sure okay yeah. what if she's awesome how funny that would be what i want to just know right what's your death row meal my death row meal okay i eat insanely healthy right now mm-hmm. and i have for like the last year and a half all i would want on death row it's my last day yeah i want ramen noodles pizza rolls and craft mac and cheese That's i want to throw great. it back to my fucking 10 year old diet absolutely i, I eat all of that yeah. literally right now Ab- like give me some extra cheddar blasted goldfish oh my god i just had those last some night some sour to god. punch oh god. straws like take the blue. fucking smart sweets and throw them out absolutely. i want some real i love smart sweets they're all i eat now but i know like, I've, I've been trying to eat those instead of candy but it's it's not the same they're amazing but like a sour i just want to feel like cr- absolute crap before yeah, it. That's, that diabetes pack yes <laughs> give me donuts give me it all um what else do i want to know what's your biggest pet peeve Ooh, my biggest pet peeve there's all like the small ones like the breathing and the chewing of food and the <laughs> like that's like that vibe for me but then like Real pet peeve. Ah. Honestly, special forces got rid of a lot of my pet peeves because it just didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Like there was there was a day where literally like I used to be like a germaphobe. Like do not share drinks, do not share food, like nothing. Okay, Howie Mandel. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, like wouldn't share, would maybe share if my mom it would if it was like necessary or with somebody like a girlfriend like or 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 i had a boyfriend as well but like that was it yeah um and on special forces there was days where like i literally would just like drink my water you need water right now like and like they would i would give it to like some of the boys first and then i would drink right after them because it just didn't matter anymore and it was either drink or don't that's probably a crazy experience i can't even imagine i just like it does take away all the little shit because you're so focused on like and you don't get to speak living. to family. You don't get to speak to yeah. the world. You don't have your phone. You don't get to mm-hmm. talk to the outside world. You, anytime you have a moment of celebration, you are knocked back down to zero. Yeah. You, I mean, there are countless And you stories. chose to do this. You were like, I, I chose to do this. Second I got the offer, I said yes. Like, yeah. I saw season one and was like, why am I not a part of this? Yeah. Going into it, I, I thought I knew what to expect. Yeah. Being there, there's... I've never been on a show that I... I Lee is nothing in comparison to... Y- no, literally nothing, yeah. nothing. But I, like, whenever I talk about Special Forces in, in length, I call, I call it selection. So selection means show, 
and recruits means cast. Yeah. And like whenever I talk about it, like I literally will be like during selection because like I you never thought it was a part of a TV show. Oh, uh, because it's just like you don't care that you're being filmed. You're doing shit that's so. You are just there and you are you are in it. And there is no like the only time the wall broke of the TV show really was some tasks you would see cameramen, but they would wear our same outfit. So they really blended in. Yeah. And um, other times you we got mic'd twice a day. They'd have to change our batteries. Mm. But you couldn't talk to the crew. They wouldn't talk to you. Like the same guy mic'd us and you couldn't talk to them. Like no, there was never. So you could only talk to the people on the show. Mm-hmm. Who, did, who was your favorite cast member? Me, Tyler Cameron, and Nick Vile got really close. Yeah. Those three, like us three are like brothers yeah. and sister, obviously. <laughs> They're like brothers to me. Yeah. Yeah. What was it like being with Black China? Like, what was she like? I think she, it's cool that she chose to do that. I, I do too. I, never, I think it's her rebrand is so cool. Like mm, crazy. Yeah. She, she was really cool. She had some beef with some people that I like was like zoning out for because like sleep when you can. Yeah. And so like I woke up and was like, what's going on? And like couldn't get into the drama. Like I don't know what what actually ended up happening. Yeah. I still don't know to this day. Um, but she's <laughs> she's beautiful. Like yeah. I she is. yeah, I didn't know what she's to expect gorgeous. with her. She's great. Wow, I love that. Honestly um, everyone on on forces was I awesome. feel like in all the time that I've known and seen you, you this you can tell that that really did change you. But just you are like really maturing, being completely. You. You've always been who you are. But I mean, like I just feel like this is fucking JoJo. This is your yeah. moment. I, you're one of those people, and I don't I don't think this a lot about anyone. But like I'm so excited to see what the future holds for you. Thank you. Who is JoJo in ten years? Oh man, I wish I knew. I I see like four paths for me. Yeah, I'm the thing I'm most excited about is to be a mom. I I cannot wait to be a mom. I can't wait to have babies. Right now I'm in. I want twin boys and a baby girl. That's that's my phase I'm in right now. But I mean it changes all the time, and I'm gonna be happy with whatever little nuggets I end up with. Um, Yeah, but I want to tour. I want to perform. That's my that's my like passion. So there's no like fall off Wyoming moment. Like you you're gonna be doing the damn thing. I want to be doing the damn thing. Right yeah, I, I really do. And if my life takes me somewhere else, you know yeah. it does. And I I don't try. Listen, I've tried to predict the future, Good and heart. I've planned two weddings, yeah. and I've planned babies <laughs> with people, and yeah. I clearly was wrong. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. I think after I planned my second yeah. wedding and I was wrong, I was like, eh, okay, no more planning anything. Yeah, for me. Yeah. Absolutely. Honestly, I'm the same way when people ask me that. I'm like, listen, I'd, let's get through tomorrow. Yep. You know what I mean? But yep. I was just curious. That's the plan. But you have no idea how much it means to us to have you on cancel. Oh my God, I love being here. Like, we, I'm literally in awe of you. I think that's the craziest. Thank you. You have, like, the you have the craziest life story life. and you okay. are definitely just doing, I feel like make a wish right now. You're doing Get out of here. I know. On and no, I'm, you're doing make a wish for my like, 12 really self. Talk. You are so, <laughs> so, so sweet. And thank you so much, Jojo. See you all for coming anytime. on the canceled podcast. Anytime. Thank and we'll be me. there at the Special Forces premiere. Yes, week two, it's going to start. I can't wait. Thank you, Jojo. Yeah. I'm like, Thank I'm going to see Tyler Cameron. <laughs> buy, her, <laughs> buy her books and blenders and bows and whatever else Get is out, out there. And watch special, special voices. Plates. <laughs> we love you, Jojo. Oh, I love y'all.